Day two of the third annual Thousand Islands Open was all about making the cut. At the end of the day, the field of 100 would be cut in half. As the day began, teams knew it was going to be a more difficult day out on the water. Weights on the scale were bound to drop no matter where the teams were going to fish. Winds on the lake had picked up considerably, prompting many teams to avoid it. For those teams willing to fight the turbulent water, the potential for a big bag was worth the trouble, although it didn't pay off for all the teams who made it out there. It's very hard to fish in 12 feet of water, 14 feet of water in big waves. You know, in four footers, it's real hard to fish, and that's what our problem was today. Teams on the river had their own issues, such as heavily pressured fish and increased competition on the water. Ran to a few of our spots we left from yesterday. The fish weren't there. Ran to some of our secondary spots and tried to put a day together. Nothing what we were hoping for, but hopefully it's enough to make the cut. As the day on the water ended, teams headed for the stage. Each basket placed on the scale revealed a tough day on the water. For some teams, their participation in the tournament would end here. Thanks for fishing with us, folks. See you next year, hopefully. Right on. Teams were on big fish, but they needed to remain consistent or improve upon their day one numbers if they wanted to keep their place at the top of the standings. Some teams moved up in the standings thanks right to on. a better day on the water. Brian Bailatis and his son Brian Jr. would surpass the competition with a 26.10 pound bag, an impressive bag that put them over two pounds ahead of the nearest competition. But it would all come down to the final team to weigh in. The Johnston brothers would return with another monster bag, establishing their dominance in this tournament. With the final teams weighed in, the top 50 teams were verified for day three. Teams would take turns at turning the keys, and after 18 attempts, Dave Roy would hear the hum of the engine. Overnight storms and steady rains greet the 50 teams on day three of the Thousand Islands Open. An exhausted field of anglers will now have to consider this new factor in their attempts to maximize their final day out on the water. We're all pretty good fishermen here, so it depends on who can figure a mode on a day like this because this is the first really uh, storms that we've had throughout the tournament. We're not going to the lake today, put it that way. Yeah. We're going to stay in the river. Two days of getting beaten up out there, I think, is uh, too much. We're still going to head out to the lake, I think, and uh, hopefully our fish will still hang around. We've got a few good deep spots we're going to try, and maybe a few shallow spots when it clears up. Maybe they'll switch to largemouth uh, first thing and uh, see if the weather opens up and then uh, make a big run and see how it goes. We're on rock and sand. The sand might hurt us, the rock might help us. So we're, we're, we're going to see through the day and uh, We've got 10 spots, we're going to milk them all. Uh, we're going to skip the lake today. We're going to start right here in the parking lot. We're going to flip for largemouth under that pontoon boat right there and uh, see if we can't get a limit, and then we're going to go for smallmouth. The weather starts to clear as the boats prepare to blast off. After two days of fishing these waters, what options are left for these teams? Good, we're in 20th position going on the final day. so. We're just gonna go for broke. We got nothing to lose. We got some fish going west and some fish going east, so we're just gonna run everything and try to see what we can get. We're gonna make a run and get to our spot. Uh, there was a lot of fish that we left, so we're pretty excited if we can get there and uh, fish it. We gotta take a chance. It's the best chance we got.
today. I know it's the wind's blowing today, but we got to go out to our best water and try and get the biggest way we can with the guys in this tournament. So many good sticks to do well here. We're sitting in eighth. We're going to need like 26 to 28 pounds. So we're going to go for broke. And if it happens, great. If it doesn't, uh, you know, we didn't come here just to cash a check. We came here to win. So that's the game plan. Just blasted our teams off for day three here at the Thousand Islands Open. Our leaders, Chris and Corey Johnson, with a three pound lead over Brian Bellatus and Brian Bellatus Jr., a father and son team for the US. Interesting curveball thrown this morning. We had a massive storm roll through this morning. We'll see how that really pans out for them today. May change some patterns for some guys. I have a feeling they're still gonna sack them up real good today. Finding fish can only happen once you get out to your spot. The problem is the lake is rough, the roughest it's been for the entire tournament. Teams heading to the big water will have to spend more time getting out. This means less time with a hook in the water. Moving from spot to spot and heading back at the end of the day will all eat up precious extra time as well. The rough waters are enough of a deterrent driving more teams to stay in the river. I feel more comfortable being, being in here with the calmer water. It is kind of early. With that storm, it may have affected them a little bit, so we're kind of hoping it's maybe going to be an afternoon bite. The fish have been biting, and a few have made it into some live wells, but for the most part, teams are struggling here as well. Popular stretches in the deeper water of the river are putting more pressure on the fish. Teams are practically fishing on top of one another for the limited resources. One more pattern left for the field are the shallow waters, but for most of the teams here, that's not an option. Once you get a storm and thunder there, the shallow fish don't seem to like that too much and they just shut down for the day. Both we'll, we'll started early right here off of these two points and they both took off the way. That guy started here, went around to the other side of the leaf bed and he's gone already, so looks like their shallow bites have been done. But for some teams, the shallows have enough potential by being better protected by the winds and the fast current. The first day in the river. Rain stop. Now. We actually need the sun on the spot for it to work, so. No matter where the teams have chosen to fish, there's no doubt that last night's storms are having an effect on everyone. Um, I thought uh, for sure that uh, it's going to shut them down, and I, I really think it did first thing. It shut them down, but I, I think they're starting to come on the chomp. So the fishing, though it appeared to be a little bit tougher yesterday than day one, to make the top 50 cut was 35.64 to get into that top 50 cut to be able to fish with us today. Big bag of the day yesterday was 27.02 by Chris and Corey Johnson, which took over the lead. I think they're making a big run again today and let's see what they bring back for us this afternoon. Teams that are leading the tournament are sticking to their plans despite overnight storms and continuing windy conditions that have stirred things up for the entire field. We uh, started off on the spot that we've uh, we weighed four big ones off of yesterday and uh, we got on it and first grip we caught one foreign changer and couldn't get bit after that. They're still there, they wouldn't bite so we had to uh, make a long run out to the lake. It's pretty nasty out there. A lot of, a lot of driving time, not a lot of fishing time. Although they had pre-fished the river, Scott Nagy and Denny Andrade remained committed to fishing the big water on day three. 
they maintained a slow and steady approach that seemed to be serving them well, netting them over 24 pounds on each day. Would they be able to repeat that number for a third time? Fab Marchese and Nick Kusibis have slipped from first to eighth thanks to a tough second day. Unfortunately, day three isn't going much better. We ran the big water and uh, man, it was rough out there. It was hard to hold. We broke off the first fish in the morning and then lost the next one. Just a tough day. First time Thousand Islands Open participants Peter Savoy and Todd Timlick are currently sitting in ninth place and are hoping to move up at least to a fifth place finish. Founder in this current feels like a six pounder. There's over $150,000 in cash and prizes at this tournament. On top of the boat lottery, the Thousand Islands Open Prize structure pays out the top 30 teams. It's a great incentive for teams out here, especially today, when it's a tough day on the water. We are in 33rd place. We're kind of hoping to get up above that 30 just to get, get a paycheck now. I can't see us catching first, but maybe even the top 10 might be tough. But. Uh... You know, who knows? Who knows? It's a different game today. We're hoping for, you know, a 20 pound bag again. A small one we need to call out and get a couple of more, but it's capable in here. Again, it's capable of doing it today. It's just a matter of uh, getting it. Yeah, yeah. One at a time, one at a time. Steve Barnett and Jack LaVert are currently in 15th place. This is their first crack at a three-day tournament, and they're doing their best to manage the fish they found during practice. We're in a good space right now, so there's still fish, not a lot of fish. We got some good fish still around, so hopefully we don't miss any, and that's uh, that'll be the key for us. We're no more than one. We're on we're on good fish, so we just gotta land them now. In 39th place, Craig Sevink and Brad Warren need a good day on the water. They've just finished putting a good fish in the box when Craig hooks up again. Todd Curry and Sean Stenson are sitting in 13th place, but it's been a tough morning with very few fish making an appearance. We had them on, two jumped off, in front of the boat, and uh, oh well. Lenny DeVos and Jeff DeLage dropped from 5th to 16th position. A spot on the lake was able to net them almost 25 pounds on day one, but the pair lost over three and a half hours fishing that same spot without a bite on day two. In this fishery, holy smokes. I mean, the only reason we did the lake the first day is because of what we found out there. And, and uh, you know, I know the, the quality is amazing in the river too. The great thing about the river is you get that much more fishing time. We have some stuff at the mouth of the lake that we even decided to stay away from that. We figured with the winds forecasted today, we just said, you know, without any bites out there on day two, there's no sense of doing it. We decided to come down the river and I'm very glad we did. We got, uh, you know, probably a six and a five and two four pounders and a, and a mid three in the box. Nice. Very good. 
For the second year in a row, Dennis Carnahan has fished this tournament on his own. Last year's boat winner was in 10th place after day two, but today has been a bit of a struggle, to put it mildly. I caught two big ones, lost another monster that hurts, and then maybe around noon, my trolling motor died because I was fighting the wind and the current. So I came back here early and upgraded right around the corner and then went to go to another spot, hit a wave, and my engine blew the ship. So I had to get towed back. I'm just happy to be here because it was up in the air for a while. Not the bag I wanted, but not the worst bag either. And do you get penalized for a large mouth? <laughs> I feel like I should be. It's my first one of the year. Open has come to an end. Teams return to the marina to find out where they stand. The weather definitely affected the performance of the entire field today. It was a tough day of fishing for teams that were already mentally and physically exhausted. Who will make it to the top and who will leave here empty handed? This is our first time doing the, the tournament together. We made it to the final day. So we. Well, no, we're happy with everything we did. We dropped a few fish to today, so like uh, we don't have a limit today. Just we just couldn't keep them pinned today. That's all. The fish won the battle today. Up next, 33, Rick Cool and Jason Hines. We're just happy you get five the way we're struggling. You got them. You got them today. That's good. 2065. We fished an area that needs sun. The sun popped out for half an hour. We got a four and a half and a couple smaller ones. Uh, and then it got cloudy again, so we ended up uh, fishing deep the rest of the day and only had seven keepers all day. We drained the well yesterday and didn't get much, but we went back today and luckily we were, uh, we were able to get some decent ones. Uh, we had a chance today at a really big bag today. We lost a few that were just as big as our, our two big ones or three big ones. So uh, it is what it is, but it was our best day by far. With the top 30 payout, teams are hoping they'll make the cut, but they'd have to wait until the big guns weigh in. A bad weather day didn't turn out to be a bad fishing day for all of the teams. Larry Mazur and Joe Fonzie would also push themselves up in the standings with a fantastic 25.85 pound bag. Other teams still had a chance to beat their 65.03 pound total, but no one could challenge their 6.66 pound smallmouth as big fish of the day. Terry Holder, who fished alone due to his partner's overnight medical emergency, would also jump up in the standings thanks to his 23.02 pound bag. Their overall weight would ironically tie with lone angler Dennis Carnahan's three-day total of 63.92 pounds. Some of the top 10 teams would stumble on the final day. Fab Marchese suffered a migraine, leaving Nick Kusevis to battle the waves and lost fish in the lake, mostly on his own. You know, as we were very competitive. We all tried to uh, win, and that yeah, was tough. 
Lenny DeVos and Jeff DeLage would bounce back on the final day as they refocused their strategy and moved to the river where they got on the right fish. 22.28 to take the lead. Lenny and Jeff's 23.32 pound bag would push the leading weight to 65.94 pounds. Scott Nagy and Denny Andrade stuck to their plan and fished the lake all three days. They would be rewarded with a 24.94 pound bag and a 71.96 pound total. Ooh, there we go. Very consistent, guys. Way to go. 24, 94 new leaders, and you're going to hang out with me for a while. Chad Wenzel and Martin Zomolani also fished the lake, averaging almost 24 pounds a day. Unfortunately, they would miss taking the lead by less than half a pound. Oh. Barry Clayton and Stephen Nebu's three-day total would fall five pounds under the closest three-day lake total, but they would deliver the river's top weight of 66.16 pounds. Charles Sim and Nigel Tui would fail to find the same quality fish that pushed them into third on day two. The last two years, we've gone into the third day in third place and blew the third day, so we're going to lobby over the winter to make this a two-day tournament. <laughs> that worked out better for us. You got two teams left. Brian Bailatis and Brian Bailatis Jr. brought in over 25 pounds on day one and two. Was their day out on the lake successful? And we have a new leader. Beauty. 21.98, guys. We'll see what happens. Right on, boys. So we need 19.15 to take the lead. Whoa. Slamming it down. 25. 25.46, official, unofficial weight, but the Johnson train continues. It's pretty impressive when the smallest bag of your weekend is 25.46. That's pretty impressive fishing, boys. Our 2017 Thousand Islands Open champions, Chris and Corey Johnson. With a new three-day total record set once again at the Thousand Islands Open, Chris and Corey Johnson raised the bar to 79.09 pounds for 15 smallmouth bass. A tight race for second ended up seeing Brian Bailatis and Brian Bailatis Jr. edging out Scott Nagy and Denny Andrade by three quarters of a pound. With a top 20 finish needing 61.52 pounds or better, the St. Lawrence River and Lake Ontario proved once again why they're considered as one of the best smallmouth bass fisheries in all of North America. The only question that remains is will the 80 pound mark be broken at the 2018 Thousand Islands Open? August 2nd to 4th marks the dates and a new launch location in Kingston, Ontario will make things even more interesting for the 100 teams looking to take home the title. The uh, tournament went really well. Uh, we covered a lot of water in practice but we didn't really find the mother load. Um, found one good area in the river that had some fish, we weren't really sure what was on it and uh, went there the first day of the tournament and caught them pretty good, some, some big ones, and uh, just went from there. Well, we couldn't ask for a better finish, and um, we were a little blown away with how good our weights were. Going into this, we said probably 23 pounds a day would win it. I think we were a little off on that one, but uh, we were surprised. Like Some of the spots we didn't practice because they're just in our milk run. We always hit them, and um, you could get a four-pounder or you could get a six, and luckily for us this week, they're all five to six pounds.